The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hola! Oi! Hi! What's up guys? Welcome to Fear Pitch. For the guys that have been waiting, sorry we had some, uh, some uh, crazy stuff going on here. Basically everyone had, we had to take apart everything and put everything back together, but we're here, we're good, we got a, I'm trying to get this thing behind me in the, uh, we got a short, sweet episode today. <laughs> um, we'll be talking about last weekend, the females, uh, the women, sorry, females. Female. Had their, uh, <laughs> their all-star match, the Malditas versus the... Pinay football. Pinay football. No, 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 dude. Pinay football all stars versus the Malditas. Whoa. Whoa, because the Malditas God, they don't really have all stars. The... They are supposed to be the epitome of all star when it comes to women's football in there the Philippines. Yeah. Oh, now if I move back the other way. Sorry, the camera's like opposite of me right now. Where am I? I can't. I can't figure this out. How I want to get this thing in there. I can't see. I just gotta sit over here. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we, Amanda and I attended the game. Amanda showed up about 20 minutes late. Oh, later, huh? Yeah, let's talk about supporting female no, football. Dude, I showed that up was, late no, the game. That was, I, I showed dude, up early what? to support the women. No. I, uh, I showed up five minutes after kickoff due oh, to McKinley shut. traffic. Guys. It happens. I got witnesses. Uh, look, look at everyone's face over there. Five minutes. You, you were there for the warm-up. I was there for the kickoff. Supporting right, so the game, not the warm-up. At halftime... The All Stars were winning one one nil. Um, based on that game, though, I feel that the Moditas were controlling the first half. Uh, the All Stars was just—I think that was like the only chance they had, really. That the All Stars? Only, yeah. No, dude, come on. There was one in the second half. No, in the first half. I mean, when they went up one zero, I think that was like the only chance they had in the first half. Just that one? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think that was the only chance, which isn't bad because that means they they yeah, capitalized. That's true. That's true. Um, then in the second half, the Moditos were able to tie, tie the game up, 1-1. One, one. Um, what was that, the 80th minute? Where they? I heard there was girls crying after the game. From what team? From Malditas, I think. Why do you think so? I don't know. I'm just asking. Why? I, I just heard. I don't know if it's true or not. I, I don't know that. Uh, I, it's just something I heard. It's probably not true. Um, but actually, the Malditas are leaving this tomorrow. Tomorrow. They're leaving to... Uh, Myanmar. Myanmar for the Ooh. AFC... Uh, is that the qualifiers, right? Those are the AFC qualifiers? Yeah. AFC, yeah. Right. So, or is it AFF? It's AFF. AFF, sorry. <laughs> A AFC is for men. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. AFF uh, qualifiers. So we will be calling uh, Coach Ernie here in a little while. And he will um, tell us more about that. Also... Tell us about some stuff that's going on with the Stallions. Um, in UFL news, the preseason tournament mm. starts starts tomorrow. Every team, um, there's three groups of five. Every team gets a 30-man roster. Team basically, teams get to uh, test out players, decide if they're going to be signing players or not, trading players around after the preseason, and uh, so on. But uh, do we have the video from the the, the game? So we'll go. We got some highlights from the All Star. Um, Female game in Malditas. Here's some highlights. Uh, Amanda wasn't here for this. Um, remember? Do you, do you remember watching that? No, I'm watching it right for now. Sure, mm -hmm. For sure, you weren't yeah, there. Yeah, I'm little, watching it right now. A little late there. Um, yes, this is them war warming up. There were some good, good people in the crowd, uh, especially from the men's side. A few ass <laughs> Which is always a, uh, always a good thing. Number 10, Jessa Sumapau. Super exciting game, guys. If you were there, I'm sure that you guys had as much fun as we did. I was yelling the entire time. Um, only because I think everybody expects the Malditas to have beaten the Pinoy Football All Stars. Pinoy Football All Stars. Um, they practice every day, and like um, you'll see in the video. I, I, are you going to show the interview? <laughs> yeah. Um, they've only, the Pinay Football All Stars only practiced three times, which was kind of like the tryout slash practice um, prior the actual match. So, um, you know, they scored in the first half, and um, 
it was a good goal, but the Malditas definitely came back and scored a tire. We call it a tire. The Malditas actually, they hit the crossbar too. <laughs> yeah. In the second half, they could have yeah. won the game. No, because but. the Pinay Football All-Stars almost scored. Did you see it went top left corner? And it was so hard. Oh, there oh, he is. me. Women's football, woo! Trying to be supportive. Supporting women's football, supporting football all around. All around. Um, so do any of these, do any of these uh, females from the All Star team? Do you think they'll be called to the Maldi to the Maldita? Well, you what? know what? Some of them should actually be playing there. Um, so what you happens? see why, why a lot of they? talent. Uh, I'm not so sure. It's something we can ask Coach Ernie maybe next time because he he did agree to come on the show um, as soon as they get back from Myanmar. So we can talk about how the Malditas did and you know if he was happy with the results, if the new imports from the US did a good job, contributed to the team, if, I mean. I heard they're all young. Super young. So I heard this team, this team, got, what, don't what? What were you about to get at? <laughs> what were you about to say? Aren't you yeah. crushing on one of them? I, um, she's ooh, six, there it is. 16. Get out of here. You're ridiculous. This girl. Let's, not, let's get started on you, okay? Don't. These are good highlights. Yeah, these are great highlights. So we got the goal. Some of the players on the uh, Malditas, because like I mentioned last show, I've never seen them play um, live. They, oh, hold on. <laughs> What's up, Pinapitch? We are here on this beautiful Sunday at Paradise Stadium. We're watching women's football. We got the Malditas playing. Uh, the Pinai Football All Stars for the first ever. And it's halftime right now, and it's 1-0. Uh, goal scored by number 20. Nikki Regalado from USD. She's the captain of USD. USD. Had a pretty good game. Um, first half thoughts, I would say Maldives are controlling the game, but they're not getting any chances. Uh, the Finite Football All-Stars are doing a really great job. I mean, they've only trained three times prior to this match, so you can see. I mean, and it is also sort of like a tryouts thing. Um, and the, uh, the Maldives, they train every day, so you can kind of see. I mean. uh, um, so it's women's football. It's doing good. <laughs> We got actually we got so there's a lot of people. The it's energy amazing. Here is really high. Yeah, it's really a lot of people. There's a lot more people than I thought there'd be. Wow. We actually got um, some UFL men's football players in the stands as well. There's uh, James Jones' husband's watching. A bunch of the Stallion football players. We got uh, Coach Hans getting involved over here. If you can see him smoking his uh, his regular cigarette. Uh, we got OJ Porteria. OJ, please come here. We got OJ Porteria, who's uh. Been on fever pitch before before Amanda came on. OJ, what are, what are your thoughts of uh, the women's football game going on today? Um, I feel like the passing sequences were uh, on point. Um, I feel like the Malditas were actually dominating uh, when I was here because I got here a little late. But um, I feel like uh, they're getting chances. But it was just in the final third that they were struggling. Um, but yeah. That's it, OJ. All right, thanks, OJ. Thanks for stopping by. OJ just came from the gym. Right. Beep, buffing up. <laughs> yeah, buffing up. <laughs> OJ's been hitting the gym a lot lately. He cracks me up. <laughs> I feel like every time I see him, it's in, he's in a, like a sando. He, he has to show off. No, and I'm then there was, a, there was an after party for the girls at Skinny Ooh. Mike's. Did you attend that after no, party? No, no, I didn't. I went... What? But I've heard stories, dude. A ton of stories. Well, let's not make the Malditas look bad. Well, I, I went bad. To, I went in and said hi to the girls and stuff. Why and would they look bad? What kind of stories are you talking about? I mean, it was, they're fun girls. Fun stories. I mean, it was open. <laughs> he said that. Girls. It was open bar for like two hours, 7.30 to 9.30. And when you get booze, a bunch of really passionate football players and uh, together in one room. I mean, what happens? You can ask OJ, right? I'm kidding. You gotta, you gotta edit that, guys. Edit that. Take that out of there. <laughs> Beep! Too late for that. All right, so let's give uh, Coach Ernie a call. Oh, yeah. Is he gonna be on speaker? No. Hello, Coach. You gotta give it to him. Well, we have to call him right now. Just say. Guys, we're waiting for Coach Ernie to pick up. Uh, we know that Malditas are actually in at dinner right now. Um, so what we're gonna have is we're gonna have Coach Ernie tell us about um, what their uh, what this tournament is they're attending, what's his expectations, um, how does the team look, 
Um, let's be very supportive of the Maldita guy, Malditas guys. They are uh, representing uh, the Philippines. Um, they're going to, you know, wear the Philippine flag. So um, it's always great to be supportive. Coach Ernie, are you there? Hello. Did you Coach Ernie. Hi, Coach Ernie, are you there? I'm here, I'm here. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Hi. how are you? Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Coach Ernie, uh, we're calling because we want to get some information on the Malditas. Yeah. All right, we're going to keep going. We're going to try to get in touch with Coach Ernie one more time. This is the second time we've done this, uh, this phone call thing. Um, it works out once we get it on there, though. Last time we did it with uh, Jason DeJong. You weren't here for that. Oh, really? Yeah, really. But he came on the show twice, yeah? And he wants he, to get on again. He came on the show once, yeah. He wants to come back again. Um, guys, thank you guys for watching our show last week. Uh, I got a lot of comments on my, my pink toenails. They're, they're still actually pink, and they are chipping away so I'm thinking about getting a new color so if you guys have any suggestions on new colors for my toenails tweet me at Jono Romero 9 or tweet Amanda at A Fernandez 10 A Fernandez 10 I try to get Amanda to paint my toenails but she's not she's not about it so I'm taking volunteers I'm taking volunteers okay. yeah we're gonna get in touch with coach hello coach hello It's right. Not there. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna t we're gonna go well, while we try to get in touch with Coach Ernie one more time. We will go on to uh, oh you know the Malditas oh sorry guys you know the Malditas are playing against Japan. No when. In this in this cup. Uh, like, which Japan team? Like the, the, the supposed the Japan U twenty three. Okay. All right. But I mean the Japan women are Dude, really good. Japan Japanese women come they come to Guam and they train and they hold camps. And they play some of the men's teams in Guam. They're so they, they good. They are good. But like, you know what, guys? Like the, um, Japan in general never really supported football. Oh, here we go. Up till recently, they fought for it, so they can be a shining example of what it's like to uh, continue to strive for development, keep voicing out concerns and everything. Um, you know, small things really help, and then hopefully, maybe one day, you know, we'll get much more support. Um, from the government. I don't know how big the budget is, but should we try again? So some good international football going on. Um, other international football stuff that's going on, uh, you know, being from the USA, gotta say, um, USA will be playing Costa Rica, the men's team. And uh, some crazy things is, uh, a few months ago, USA beat Costa Rica 1-0, and Costa Rica came to the United States to play them. And Costa Rica men's team was uh, pretty pissed off. They had to play in the snow. What? So even though the, the, the Costa Ricans, they call them the Los Ticos. Mm -hmm. they what does ask, that mean? I don't know. It means you're just like uh, Philippines would be Pinoy's. Okay, okay. Um, they asked to cancel the game, but the U.S. wouldn't cancel it. And it was, a, <laughs> it was one of the World Cup qualifying games. Right. And they played and lost 1-0. So now the U.S. is in Costa Rica, and it's just hell for the U.S. and Costa Rica right, right. now. They got... They've, they've had six facilities where they've been told that they can train at. When they go to train there, they're not allowed to train. <laughs> so they're looking for their own soccer pitches to train at, which the Costa Rica Federation is supposed to be taking care of that. They didn't have hotels to stay at. They didn't have hotels to stay at, so when they got there, they had to get their own hotels. Is it sabotage? So a few players are staying elsewhere uh, in separate hotels. Mm -hmm. They're saying that, this is what I was just been reading on uh, soccer.com, they're saying that when the, the day of the game, they're plan they're, from where the players are staying from the U.S., there plans to be a lot of <coughs> traffic. So, like, wherever the buses are coming out of, there's going to be a lot of traffic. Right. Um, oh, I think we got Coach Ernie on the line. Hello? Hello. Hi, Coach. Coach. Nice. Hi, hi. Got it. Yeah, can you hear us now? Can you good? Yeah, I can. Okay, so, Coach Ernie, we want to get some information on all the Malditas. Can you tell us... Um, on this uh, trip the Malditas are going on and, and the, what's the importance of it, please? Well, uh, this, we're going to be leaving for Myanmar tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to be attending the AFF Women's Championships. AFF, guys, uh, not AFC. We are in Group B uh, where uh, 
two of the top of the five teams will progress to uh, the next round, the semifinals. So on our group, we have uh, Japan, the Philippines, <gasps> Myanmar, Indonesia, and Laos. Are you um, intimidated by any of those teams? Oh, no, not really. But no, we, we know that Japan is a World Cup champion. Yes. Uh, when, we, when we saw the draw, uh, I had a different plan. Because when we had Myanmar in a group in Laos, uh, I elected to bring the main squad, you know, the, main, the same squad that played the AFC Championship. When, but yeah. when Japan came to the picture, I said, well, let's prepare for the SEA Games. I don't want to. I don't want the main squad to have to miss too much school. So what I did now is I brought in the U19, uh, U17 girls, and with some of the senior players. Yeah, so I can show This is more of a preparation for the younger girls to get exposure, and then for the senior girls to know what they they're up against for the sea games. Okay, and of of your senior team, of the senior team. Um, what girls are you taking from the senior team? What is that? From your senior team, from the senior team. Um, yeah. what, what girls are you taking? Uh, well, it's Samantha Nieres, my daughter. Uh, Natasha Alquiros. Uh, Ina Palacio, she's one of the senior players, but she just, uh, up, she just went up from the 19 to the senior team. Uh, then you have Pasquis Simpolido. Uh, you have Joanna Hooplin, who was part of the AFC squad. You have Marissa Park, part of the AFC squad. And then you have Shalice Baisa. And then you have um, Aisa Mondero, who's also part of the hey. AFC squad. Okay. And unfortunately, our team captain, Maria Benitez, uh, just tore her ACL. So she won't be able to join us. And also, Cristina De Los Reyes, unfortunately, uh, suffered an LCL strain uh, last week. And so she won't be able to join us, but she will be for the Sea Games squad. How how big of a loss is uh, Mariel Benitez to to the squad? Well, she's a team captain, so she brings a lot of experience to the squad. Okay, um, but you know, uh, Samantha, Patrice, and Tasha are also senior players. They've been you know with the team since 2005, so the leadership's going to be there. Uh, now it's it's a matter. Of holding the team together, making sure that that confidence translates from the senior players to the younger players, and then we'll see what happens. But our objective is to progress past the first round. What does the um, atmosphere feel like amongst the team? Uh, what, are, what are your uh, expectations for the girls? What do, what do they expect to get out of this tournament? Well, um, we expect to um, progress past the group stage. Uh, you know, um, realistically, I don't think we're gonna beat Japan, but we want to, we want it to be a respectable game. Uh, we have a very good chance against Myanmar, uh, Laos, and Indonesia. Yeah, so if we get past the group stage, then we might end up having a rematch with Thailand or Vietnam or play the Australia under 19 team. Nice. Nice. It's all really exciting games, I think. Now, Coach, we were able to attend the, um, the All-Star game last weekend. What uh, is that? What are, what are your thoughts on the All-Star game? What, what is my what on the All-Star game? What were, what, are your, what were your thoughts on the All-Star game, on your team performance oh, the game? and the it other team? Game. Uh, I have a lot of players there who used to play uh, for me in the women's national team. Uh, Nikki Regalado. Uh, you have um, Maurice Magdolo. Uh, Jaya Ibarra was part of the national team also. Uh, Milka Romero was part of the U19, U16. Uh, Manalansan was part of the U16, U19. Uh, a lot, you know, Kim Rodriguez. Uh, uh, Sarah was part Sarah, of the U16 last year. 16. There's a lot of players um, so who were part of the, and are part of the national teams, the age groups. Uh, a little bit disappointed with, with some of the fans booing the national team, you know, because they were, you know, it's like saying you're booing the national team, you're booing your own daughter. You know, I guess some of them, some of the parents who were booing, the daughters actually play for the national team. It's tough. Um, now, these, these uh, girls and ladies that were on the All-Star team, 
do you see yourself calling some of them into the national team camp in the future? Well, I, I, I want them to be part of the national team. I mean, uh, the goal scorer, Nikki Regalado, was on our lineup. But unfortunately, she was, she could not make it because she wasn't released by her school. Uh, same thing with with uh, with other players. So, you know, it, that's not for me to answer. I think you have to address that question to the coaches. Uh, but as far as women's national team, like I said, they used to play for us. Uh, they were part of the 2010-2011 squad. So, you know, after that, it became a problem already players being released uh, to the women's national team for, for whatever reason. So I think, you know, what, what's good is for for that question to be addressed by the coaches who are not, whose schools are not represented in the national team squad right now. Okay. Um, I know uh, you and I were able to talk the other, the other morning, um, and I know you said a lot of your girls are stateside. A lot of the girls that you're taking on this tournament are, are stateside. Um, um, I, I can barely hear you. I said uh, we were able to speak the other morning, and I know you mentioned that a lot of the girls that you're taking on this on this tournament are um, are stateside, are from the states. Uh-huh. Can uh huh. You, uh, uh, Phil, Phil, Phil Amps. Yeah, Phil Lambs. Yeah, they're Phil Lambs. Yeah. Can you tell us how you were able to uh, find these Phil Lambs, and um, you know, and how how this, this this process is working, and how it's improving for you, and how it's helping you to improve the Maldives? I, I kind of got, I didn't get the last part after the Phil Lamb part. Can you help us, can you, can you uh, explain to us how you're able to get the Phil Lambs that, you, that you're finding and um, oh, okay. how, how it's helping um, you, how it's helping you and your success with the Malditas? Um, we, we've had three camps in the U.S. so far and um, we have a, a group in the U.S. Uh, made up of volunteers, uh, Mark Mune, Uchi and Pilito. Uh, Ralph, uh, Coach Trey, and Coach Clint. And they've been helping me identify potential uh, camps in the U.S. until Canadians. Um, <coughs> every camp that we, <coughs> we have, we've had an average attendance of about 60 players uh, from the U16, U19, and a women's uh, senior, senior. So it's, it's important because they bring a lot of quality. Uh, you know that, that the training that they get in the U.S., the exposure, the number of matches and everything, is at a higher level compared to the Philippines. Uh, but that's the only difference. If you look at the, the size of the players, uh, it's the same as your local players. Uh, most of the players who played um, last Sunday, I think about four of them were actually born in the Philippines and migrated to the U.S. Okay. Uh, sorry, about six. So there's not much difference. Uh, it's just, I guess, the culture that they, you know, they have in the U.S. is a little bit different. I, I mean, I played Division One in the U.S., so I kind of have an idea that it's very competitive. You train differently. You train more often. Yeah. And plus, being part of the national team is very, very important. Uh, all these girls, especially the girls who played in the AFC, they were recognized by the schools. Uh, articles were written about them. And to this day, you know, the schools are very proud about these girls being part of the women's national team. And it's something that it's not happening right now uh, with our players in the Philippines. You know, I, I, I haven't seen any article written by the school except for La Salle about uh, players being part of the national team. Well, that's, what, that's what we're trying to help with. We're trying to... Um Spread the word more of the Malditas and the women's football that's that's taken uh, taken away here in the Philippines. Um, well, yeah, any more qu questions for Coach Ernie? Um, Coach, how willing are the girls when you first approach them to come back to the Philippines and start playing here? How willing are they to come back given um, all the things you mentioned in terms of like faci the facilities in the States are better, they get to practice more, the coaching techniques and the technologies there definitely help with um, having a higher standard of practice. How willing are they to come back here when you mention it to well, them? They're very willing because being part of the national team it's is honor. very important. Definitely. You know? And that's something that, that our local players have to understand. None of these players are getting paid. None of them are getting allowances. You know, they're, they're, they're none? Did you school. say none? none? None. Zero. Okay. Zero. 
no allowance, no nothing. Just yeah, none. pure you, none. dedication and sacrifice. Do you and, mind me asking, um, Coach, how they how they survive here? Well, we get a lot of support from the Federation. Okay. Uh, we've been getting a lot of support from uh, new sponsors that we have. Um, Globe is one of them. Mitre is one of the sponsors. <laughs> Mitre. And then uh, Gilligan's and my company and a lot of different other sponsors. Good. They're kind of pitching in. Pagor is another big sponsor who's been... Uh, providing us with accommodations. Wow. Coach, I know there's a, there's a girl from Virginia. She played, she played for the same club that I played for and she went to Wake Forest. What's her name? Park. Is it? She I made think she's it, number her, eight. Wake Forest made, yeah, made it to the quarterfinals of the NCAA championships. Uh, she, she, wow. played for, she played for uh, Reston Football Club, which is the club that I grew up playing with in, the, in uh, Virginia. She's a baller. Yeah, yeah she's actually she's in the Hall of Fame of, West, uh, of Wake Forest. Yeah. All right, there's a lot of, really you know, there's a lot of good, really good players. And, and I think uh, with what's, what tonight football is doing, it's opening the eyes of a lot of the U.S. players that potentially there's a possibility of them coming back and playing for local that's awesome. Ooh. That's awesome. Uh, do you have any more co questions for Coach Ernie? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's still there. Yeah. Uh, Hello? I think I'm good. All right, Coach. Well, thank you for taking the time to uh, chat with us. Coach, are we going to see you when you get back? We hope to, yeah. Can yeah. we see you yeah, and we'll, some we'll of the guys when you get back on the show? Yeah, we'll be back on the 23rd and hopefully they'll be on the 24th. So we get a... Do something on the 23rd. Yeah, so we'll, we'll love to have you guys on the show to talk about your experience and how the tournament went. Sure. We will uh, we'll stay posted with you guys, and uh, we'll follow the team throughout the whole tournament. Please keep okay. posting, Coach, so that we, uh, we can announce it on here for those who don't really log on to Facebook or something. Okay. And best of luck, definitely. Best of luck yeah, to best all of the luck. girls. Our luck to the Malditas. Our luck to you. And... Uh, Again, thanks for taking this call. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So, guys, these, these past three or four episodes, we've been focusing on women's football. As you guys can tell, we are trying to help the women's football side grow as much as possible. Um, and this is, this is just a start. Um, eventually, we can you know, get to where it, it is. So when the girls get back, we're definitely going to continue on the subject of women's football, um, especially right now that men's football is in the – in preseason, and um, you know, we're waiting for the cup to start. It's a great time to focus on on Amanda and her side of the football world. Yeah. Since it's all it all comes together as one eventually. Um, again, we're just trying to help the movement of football here in the Philippines keep growing. Um, if you guys want to check out some pictures, we actually have some pictures of the game. Um, some people definitely need to be recognized. Haya did an amazing job. She had great saves. I played with her in the NCRFA back um, when we were the under-19 and we were being coached by Coach Hans. She's a good player. Um, oh, the number eight, she's fantastic. Great dribbling skills. Um, composure is great. Um, she played in the midfield. She's from um, Virginia. She's really good. She, her passes were good. Her long, her long crosses were good. I mean, I didn't see anything wrong with her. And I was actually watching with some of my Seacut girls, and we were like, in terms of like an all-around player, she's definitely, definitely good. Yeah, she's a baller. She's a baller. Oh, our fave sees. Oh, we got this guy. Coach Hans Smith. Coach Hans. What a character. And uh, Ina Palacios, the uh, goalkeeper of the Malditas. Still on the young side, but definitely, definitely talented. Some action. Actually, these pictures, I have to give credit to Joanne Paras. Um, she is the photographer for Pinay Football as well as my soccer team, and she takes amazing pictures. Um, I don't know who this player is. I think that player is from FEU. The girls behind the entire event, 
Um, we have Christine Nolan, who actually um, runs Spinite Football. We started it together, but then I decided to take hold of Seacut. And she will be joining us here next week. So she, can, she as well as uh, NJ Joaquin, who manages PF now with her, they can talk about their experience trying to um, host a, a game like this, um, what the struggles were. I mean, was it difficult? Because no one's ever, I guess, attempted to... To host an event like this and for me personally as I guess everyone else who was there it was such a success definitely a success it was an exciting match we showed everyone out there that women are definitely capable of playing really good football um, I, I the next girl behind oh sorry beside her is Bettina Yang I can't see from this far but um, all those girls are definitely critical when it comes to Pinay football, they do it out of the goodness of their hearts. I don't think anyone's getting paid. I'm not so sure how it's like now, but all those girls um, help make the, the event really successful. <sighs> Sarah, she's, um, she's the girl that Coach Ernie just mentioned. Definitely um, a really good player. She's also very young. Some happy faces. They definitely feel... <laughs> or felt accomplished after the entire game. I mean, a one, a draw against the uh, Malditas is definitely something to be proud of. And, um, you know, it was very exciting to see such an event take place and nothing against the Malditas. They are very good with possession and I think that um, this AFF will be very successful for them. The girls on there are fantastic. Very, very inspiring women. Fantastic. Coach, <laughs> Coach Buddha, such a great coach. Um, coach Hans was saying that um, Coach Buddha during this, this game um, let all the members of the PF All-Stars play. So she made use of every single person that they got on there to, uh, to play. And you know, she was very successful in her, her coaching strategy that time. Coach Lett from FEU. We have them, I guess, trying to strategize here. Happy faces. Yay! Woo That's where I watched from. That. Yay! Hope Solace uh, from Iloilo. She actually plays for Seek at FC. She does not hesitate to dive for the ball. I mean, the ball could be this slow and a person's right about ready to kick full blast. And she's going to go for the diving header. She does not care. Very, very good player, in my opinion, should be one of the players who should be invited to play for the uh, Maldita. She is amazing. I mean, I think that Seekat FC would, um, well, we're really lucky to have someone like her. Everything okay, guys? Again, happy faces. Eyes on the how many pictures did you pick? Photo album. Couple, dude. It's really <laughs> cool. They're all action shots. Woo! Coach Karen. That my one cousin, that. shout out. She coached for the Ateneo uh, University before and then. That's stopped. your cousin, isn't it? You said that's your Most cousin? Deaf. Yo, cousin. Again. Hope. Trying to clear the ball. I mean, the Malditas, they are fast and furious. I'm sorry, but they are really, they are really, really aggressive players. This is Nikki. Shout out to Nikki Regalado. The, uh, she was uh, the one who scored. She is captain of UST. Um, and she played for Seekat a few times. Um, I guess one tournament and a few games. She is really good. Definitely, definitely one of the best forwards I've seen here in the Philippines. Like Coach Ernie said, she, um, she's on the roster of the Malditas, but she couldn't, be, she couldn't make it. She's still young as well. Definitely very talented. Go Nikki. I mean, her goal was good. Um, she's the type of striker who, when they see an opportunity, they just take it. They left or right foot, whatever, they, they just go for it. Okay, go Hope defending there. Happiness. Oh, there's Coach, Coach Ernie. Ernie. All these girls from um, the Pinay Football Association, they are doing it all out of the goodness of their hearts. They are all volunteers. Um, in fact, uh, we had some girls from UST, like Rara, Luna, 
who, and I think her sister Hannah as well, who were there taking the donations. Remember I told you that kickoff was at 4.30, but if you went ahead, um, you could bring your, your stuff for the, for the victims of Maring. So everyone, everyone who organized this did it out of the goodness of their hearts, pure passion and love for football, as well as its development. That's Mary Ignacio. She actually, she's very fast. Um, she played for Seacut, but now plays for Chelsea FC. Um, great to see her on the field. She's still, she's still a very good player. Does not stop running. <laughs> kind of like Lionel Messi. Yay! Did you enjoy the pictures or are you checking it out? I'm checking it out right here. <laughs> Calm down. I'm checking them out over here. All right, guys. Well, now that Amanda's gotten her fix on women, is that, does that sound right? Fix on women? Yep. Fix on women's football. Um, is that, does that sound right? Does that sound it kind sounds of like perfect. Sexual kind of like, nah. Uh, I don't know. It's all right. But um, thank you guys for tuning in to Fever Pitch. Sorry that we uh, were here a little, a bit late today. A bit late. Um, our, basically, we're dedicating this episode to the Malditas, and we wish them all the best. If everyone or people out there who want to tweet them just to um, give their support, I mean, prayers definitely help. I'm sure they will appreciate that. Um, Malditas, you know, all our support is with you. Women's football, we need to show people Woo! out there that um, we are a formidable How force and that we can... Uh, Leave our mark. Jonah is so immature yeah. right now. So immature. I'm glad the show's I'm, ending before I'm he says right, anything stupid. I'm, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm right behind you guys, Malditas. Behind you guys. I support you all the way. And um, Stay tuned for next best episode. Best of luck. Stay tuned for next episode next week. We should try and have Christine Nolan as well as NJ and other people from Pinai Football come here, talk about the event. Uh, and I'm also going to have to get some men on here too because this no women's need. football thing is taking over our show. Down four weeks, but it's, it's all in great support for women. But I'm gonna have to get some men on women here as well. Women are great. Some maybe some comp competition between men and women or something next week, or we'll see. The UFL preseason cup starts tomorrow. Um, if you are uh, near Imperador, check it out. There's games from 8 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m. Uh, last kickoff is 8 p.m. A lot of football going on. Um, congratulations to everyone that competed in the Kia Cup this past weekend. Um, congratulations to everyone that played in the All-Star Games and, you know, best of luck to everyone and I let's get this football started. We've, had, so we've been long. way, uh, it's been way long before we've had competitions and now, now we're kicking off. So um, we have much more to talk about next week, much more scores to talk about, much more teams. Sir, thank you. Um, I want to thank Progenix. Again, best protein around for athletes. I uh, didn't wear the t-shirt, but we got you know, Progenics. That should be like a commercial or something. I should um, buy the uh, want to thank Mizuno. Um, Amanda's got some things. Let's thank your, your hair salon. Beyond Let's, the Box as well. Beyond um, the Box. Hair Shaft Salon. Amazing salon. Hair Shaft. Du, du, du. Oh God! Lucy Britannico is an amazing, very talented, and hardworking um, woman, and she did this to my hair. If you guys are a fan of it, definitely go check it out it, at the fort. Don't laugh! Don't laugh! Dude. Looks good. It looks good. It looks Thanks. good on her, guys. If you guys don't think Amanda's hair looks good, tweet her. Tell her. To do, tell her, tell her How to, about if you like it? Tweet. Tell her. Tell her if you don't like it, it, you can just keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And we shall see you next week. Peace. Peace.